I decided to teach because I really want to make a difference in, in children's lives. I know a lot of adults will say kids never know when they're ready. Learners don't want our opinion. I don't think a lot of learners take the subject seriously. I was taught that sex gives you AIDS. I knew that sex was a bad thing to do. We grew up knowing it is taboo to talk about it. We were a bit shy to hold each other's hand or to kiss each other. A teacher needs to remember that this child needs support. Forming long-lasting relationships is a major developmental milestone for teens. Now, romantic relationships can come with their fair share of emotional ups and downs, but it contributes to a young person's capacity to care, share and develop emotionally. I'm Dino Ranaga. Welcome to Breaking the Silence, the only show that gives the youth a platform to speak. And today's show is about relationships and love. Today, we hope to give our youth the pillars of having healthy relationships. Relationships where they can be respected, where they can trust that they are safe and where they can love freely. Joining us today is Nombeli Sombanga, a teen coaching expert who is also known as a youth alchemist. She'll be watching the learners' discussion backstage with our panel of educators. My name is Chanel Hector and I've been teaching life orientation for about seven years. Hi, my name is Albert Kiet. I've been a teacher for about three years now. My name is Moira November. I've been teaching life orientation for about 10 years. Today, our panel of learners are Ruby, Chelsea, Brian, Kersha, Farit, Pippa. Ladies and gent, welcome to Breaking the Silence. How are you feeling? Good. Good. Do you feeling good? Anyone nervous? No. no. <laughs> a little bit? I swear you'll be fine. We're all going to have a healthy conversation about love and relationships. But before we get to the talking, I want us to watch a video clip about a 17-year-old girl who's found love. Shall we? I was 14 years old when I started dating Kent and it was like love at first sight. I was so excited, I had butterflies, I was so happy, I couldn't stop smiling for days. My cheeks were so sore from smiling. In the beginning, we were a bit shy to hold each other's hand or to kiss each other. And as we slowly got to know each other over the months, then he would grab my hand and hold it and I was okay with it. He never made me feel pressured into doing anything. He was very respectful and I think that's different to a lot of other boys in my generation or my age because they do sort of tend to push for those kind of things. He became like my best friend. I told him everything and in terms of school he was definitely always there for me and he just wanted the best for me. We both definitely pushed each other a lot to be the best that we could. So, she started dating when she was 14. Makes me wonder how old you guys are. How old I'm are you? I'm 15. 15? 18. 18. 16. 16. 17. 17. 16. 16. 16. And another 16. When you were 14, did you, did you ever have dating on your mind? No. No. <laughs> there was like a point in your life when you were 14 where you just have like this little crush and you can just dream of being his girlfriend. <laughs> oh, did you have a crush? Yeah. Do you remember your crush? Yeah. Did it say his name? I tried to forget about it. Did you try to forget about it? Yeah. Was it hard? Not really. <laughs> because okay. then you can just move on to someone else. <laughs> I, I, yeah. You, see, that's the nice thing about crushes. There's no commitments in crushes. It's something that happens naturally, because if you, like, if you have an attraction towards someone, you can't really help it. You can't help it. No. I agree with you. Yeah. So crushes are kind of yeah. safe, healthy, normal. We all agree. Do you think you need to be really mature to have a relationship? Yeah. You need to have a sort of understanding because like it's like a commitment like what if like you guys are not understanding like and like situations come up and how you're going to handle it and stuff. So mm -hmm. you have to be a mature and understanding. Do you think she was mature enough at 14? Do you think anyone is, has the capability to be emotionally mature enough at the age of 14? Well, yeah, it always depends actually on the person. But mm -hmm. yeah, you get like those people who just have to grow up fast. 
what situation did you have that pushed you to mature fast emotionally? My parents were always never home, so I had to take care of my, of my brother and sister. Do you think that if you have a healthy or unhealthy relationship with your parents at home, it could possibly affect how you relate with other people romantically? Yes, mm -hmm. because um, I come from a home of a single parent, so like if I have a crush on some guy and we are in a relationship one day, I'm going to look for that fatherly love in that guy. And at our age, it will probably be too childish for him. Mm -hmm. He'll probably not, um, you know, be comfortable with that. And mm -hmm. I understand it because, obviously, because he's young. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if he can't give me that certain type of love that I'm looking for, then I would think to myself, okay, not meant to be. And I'll just try and move on from that. Mm -hmm. How many of us have not been in a real romantic relationship? By a show of hands. Three. Have you been in a romantic relationship? I have been in a relationship, short term, very short relationship. Yeah. But for me, I thought to myself, I was mature enough for the relationship, but he wasn't. So, yeah. What defines maturity to you and what defines immaturity? If you just, you know, forward and say, okay, we know we're going to have sex. Um, we know you're going to do this. We know we're going to do that. Is that what he that. did? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he was patient, but I don't think he was patient enough. Oh, is it? Yeah, because I'm obviously, you know, <laughs> I'm a girl and I don't like to be rushed mm -hmm. into things. And if you're going to rush me, then no. It's over. Yeah. <laughs> Why are the rest of you guys not in romantic relationships yet? When you're not in a relationship, you call it vibing. I think that's what you call it. <laughs> yeah. And then teenagers, vibing. That's when you have like, you like each other, but you're not at the point where you want to be in a relationship. So, so what do you do? You like you, a guy, he likes you, and... <laughs> I don't know, secretly it's dating. Like, you like dating without the title. Yeah. Because people basically. are scared of the title nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Being the boyfriend or the girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think there's a fear of titles? I think it's the commitment and s stuff they expect from out of the relationship. Mm. Maybe vibing is a bit easier, it's like a bit chilled and stuff. It's not something new. I've, learned, I've, I've heard the kids speaking about vibing. Um, I just didn't realise that it was such a big <laughs> thing. So it's not, it's not brand new, I've heard about it before. <laughs> do you feel that relationships, well vibing or romantic relationships or dating, or the untitled stuff can distract you from flourishing in your schoolwork? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think. Okay. I think you have to find the balance in your life mm -hmm. for every section of your life, your family, your schoolwork, mm -hmm. friends and dating wise. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on a person's principles. Mm -hmm. If you're a person that has like, you live by pr principles and morals, then yeah, I think you can be good. You won't be like, you won't be like a chicken without a head, mm -hmm. while you're just running around and doing mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the whole key to the thing. How to stay focused with your schoolwork and also how to keep your relationship with whoever a healthy one. I definitely did think that we, he was the one and that he would be the only person I would be with. And I did compromise my friends a lot because we would always be together and I think it kind of ruined some of my friendships. Um, also spent less time at home. When Kent wanted to go out with his friends and we wanted to go without each other, it would be a bit of a situation where we were scared to lose each other because we were afraid or jealous of them being around other girls or boys. And it did bring some insecurities into our relationship. Kent and I have been dating for three years um, and we recently decided that we should take a break from each other because our relationship became very stressful. We were very stressed for our exams and wanting to be together for our future and we just took our frustrations out on each other a lot and I think that led to the idea of us wanting to break up. What do you think are the pillars that make a healthy relationship? Trust, love, respect. Loyalty. Trust, love, respect. Loyalty. Loyalty. Understanding. Understanding. 
<laughs> When's the right time to have sex in a relationship? I'd say when you're both ready. Have you been ready? I feel I've been ready. Okay, has your partner been ready? Not really. Not really? Yeah. Okay, so from that, since you mentioned respect as one of your pillars, I would assume you haven't pushed her there yet. No, I can't. There's darkness around me, trust me, no lie. My name is Brian, well known as Truth Spitter the Realist. He blocked the light and let it be dark, but hell no, I was meant to fly. My girlfriend's name is Abongile. I feel happiness when I'm with her. Uh, I can't really say it's butterflies. Oh no, I love the fact that she's there for me when I need her. In time, years maybe, we'd be settled like adults. After high school, I really want to go into university. I'm going to do astrophysics, the study of bodies in space. I have a dream to build a name for myself in Cape Town and for Cape Town. Do you think that sex makes a relationship stronger? No. No, not at no, all. No, no, not at all. Sex does makes the bond kind of stronger in a sense, like it's an intimate connection. It's mm -hmm. not like just holding hands or it's, it's much more intimate. I think it does make your bond stronger, but not the relationship. Let's put ourselves in the shoes of those that are not as fortunate as we are. Imagine if you were either abused or molested or physically violated, sexually violated by a parent or somebody that you trust. How do you think that would impact your relationships moving forward? I don't actually think that would be the case because me and my dad, we don't see each other. Mm -hmm. Why don't you and your father see each other often? Like few things happen growing up and mm -hmm. that's why we moved to Cape Town. Mm -hmm. So as a little girl, I always wanted him around. I always wanted my daddy there, but mm -hmm. growing up, maturing and realizing mm -hmm. that he's not, he's not there made me much more accepting. I accepted the fact that he's not there and I moved on with it. Like my past relationships, it's been okay, we learned to balance things. He never actually affected any part of that. If we look at society and what is happening in society, um, the family structure as such is breaking down and children have so much baggage and so many problems because they don't have that parent figure in their lives to give them that necessary support. Do you miss your dad? Do you know Sometimes. your dad? <laughs> what happened? Do you want to talk about it? I don't mind. You don't mind? Are you sure? Yeah. When I was in grade four, my mother was an alcoholic and um, they used to drink together and stuff. And um, um, she would always come home. He would abuse her physically. He didn't have a way of, you know, speaking to my mother. I didn't have a way of speaking to us either. Our kids really do come from all walks of life and they come into our classroom and we don't really know everything that they are dealing with. So it, it made me realise that besides all the work in the curriculum, besides whatever's in the schedule, we have to break through to them to make a real difference in their lives. Are you afraid this might affect you in relationships as you grow based on what you've been exposed to? I do think that Personally, I'll be strong if he didn't give me that respect that I deserve. Then you don't, you don't have a right to be in my life. It breaks my heart that you're so young and you're having to put yourself in a situation where you're having to be so emotionally strong because that can rob you of your youth. Listening to our young adults the mature conversations and how many problems they have that sometimes we are unaware of. And they are so resilient. Despite everything, they bounce back. The school systems, the structures with your educators, are you able to go to them and pour out your hearts and cry with them and talk to them openly and freely about your aches, pains and hurts in your different relationships? Not everyone, but yeah, some. some. Are you guys comfortable talking about sex? Yes. With your educators, are you comfortable talking about sex? Yes. With your parents, are you comfortable talking about sex? <laughs> Our parents? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Definitely. You said no. <laughs> Why the big N O? I don't know. I think it's funny to talk about sex. <laughs> you think it's funny to talk about sex? Yeah, yeah it can be. To be it honest, be. I think it's actually the parents that's more nervous than you are. Talking. Yeah. Yeah. Is it? I think they find it awkward talking to you about it. And your educators? Are you comfortable talking about sex with your educators? We like never talk about sex at our school. Really? Sometimes we do in LO. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even in us. <laughs> I do feel that sexuality is not taught at home. And the classroom is the place where I open that door and I, uh, we, we discuss it. You know that your educators are watching from the other room, right? <laughs> I think um, I'm going to invite them in and we're going to talk about how we can cushion the blows of life by how we teach the learners at school. You ready to hang out with your educators and have a one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah. Super. My relationship with Ken taught me to be very strong. He definitely made me more motivated in order to do better in life. And I'm very grateful for that because I don't think without him I would have had such dedication to do really well and have a good future for myself. You shouldn't rush into anything if you aren't ready for it. And you should definitely not feel pressurized into doing something because everyone else around you is doing it. We're expanding the conversation by sitting with our educators as well as our expert, Nomveliso. Educators, welcome. Thank you very much, Nomveliso. Thank you. You were watching from a different room. What thoughts did you have and comments did you have when you listened to your learners? It's quite enlightening to hear how mature they actually are and how mature they think about the, the situation and their lives. You know. mm. I think for me, I was wondering how Vibing works. Um, <laughs> I'm still wondering how vibing works. Especially with sex is concerned. Mm -hmm. and, and, and where does it start and where does it end? I'm just being curious. In a vibe ship. In a vibe <laughs> ship. You're basically dating the person, mm -hmm. but it's without a title. So you kiss them, hug them, spend time with them. You just don't want the title. So there's no sex like in vibration ships? No. Um, with some, Not it's orange. different. Like I know a couple of friends who they don't call it vibe, I mean, they call it um, sex buddies. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, but they are still kissing, they are still hugging and all this stuff, they are just including sex. But the tricky part to that is that they, if I'm, for example, vibing, or um, me and Brian is, for example, sex buddies, that doesn't necessarily say that I, I can't have sex with another person. Sure. So, I've got a question, right? We're vibing, and I fall pregnant with my vibe buddy. Oh, oh my God. Everybody's like, oh my gosh. Because <laughs> yeah. I mean, these, it's, it's situations that can progress. It. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think that's more of an open relationship where you have sex with someone. Where mm -hmm. vibing, well, I think our age is more yeah. just spending time and getting to know the person for me. And I think that's where the, the childhood starts with teenagers. Once you get attached to a boy, it then becomes difficult to say no to sex if you're not emotionally and mature enough to say no to sex or relationship or anything otherwise because you presented yourself in a particular way with your peers where you say I don't care about that boy we're just vibing we're just jolling we're just sex buddies and nothing else no matter what you call it as a teenager just be mindful that inside the different terms and clicks in schools your heart and your emotions are still there and intact and they're not gonna change our learners are actually more clued up about things than we think. Like, I underestimated their knowledge about sex, and I've come to realize that they do know much more than what we think they know. What I found interesting was that there was, um, I think, Pip, it was you. You said that you don't talk about sex at all at school um, with regards to life orientation. Is this normal? I mean, these days, the kids are, or the learners, they have everything at a touch of a button. So. It's much easier for them, if they have an uncomfortable question about sex, it's much easier for them to go on their phones, Google it quickly, than go to, a, to an older person or, or educate and ask them. Do you agree with this, Papa? Um, I personally don't do that. I mm. go to my parents because I feel more comfortable. We did talk about sex in primary school, but I feel like nowadays the teachers in our school just assume we know all about it and they just kind of skip that section. So, learners, if you could tell your teachers what they could do better right here, right now, what would it be? I just feel that the teachers really need to 
understand and respect the learners for who they are and what they are and in turn they will receive the same respect and love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Understand that every learner is different and have patience with your learners and stuff and try to bring yourself down to their level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Educators, how do you think the learners can make it better for you? Talk to us. <laughs> ah. Ah. We can't, you may feel like you are in a, in a very bad space and you need someone and, and you need that attention, you need someone to talk to you and tell you everything's going to be fine, but we can't always see it. Mm -hmm. You have to tell us, tell us that you, that you, what the problem is and ask us to help. We can't, mm -hmm. we can't smell it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's not always easy to open up to someone. You need to like have the uh, trust. Like you have to build a relationship first and then like, yeah. Talk to them, try them out. And if you get a vibe from your teacher that I can't trust you, mm. on to the next. Yeah. Well, for me, um, one of my main, the main thing in my class is building an authentic relationship with my kids. So um, what I do is I have a, a box and it's very helpful. It's called hashtag I wish my teacher knew. Oh, wow. So wow. through that box, I've gotten to know so much about my learners, That's even beautiful. about That's about six about someone that feels that a netball coach is looking at her inappropriately. Um, I really get to know them through that box. In my class I have the rule here, what happens here stays here. So within the parameters of the four walls it stays there and we try to find solutions. Mm. I want you to also understand that because you're still in high school in class that's your life that's your future, that's who you're going to be. You've got control when you get to class mm. because that's your life. Mm. So whatever happens when you get home, you will meet it when you get home. I like the way you summed it up, I really do. The fact that what I'm taking away from it is my, my upbringing and my background does not determine my future and my destination. I can rewrite my life I can make different choices and I can paint a different picture all together. I think it was a healthy discussion. Thank you so much. I enjoyed this. Did you guys enjoy it? Yeah. Yep. It was nice, right? Yeah. We had a good vibe today. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely stunning. Educators, focus on positive and healthy relationships. Build strong self-worth and encourage learners to delay sexual debut or negotiate consistent condom use. Parents, talk to your children to avoid misguiding from peers. Learners, have relationships based on respect. Today's episode was about sex and relationships, and I'm pleased to get to the end of it with a newfound respect for the youth of South Africa. I have learned from them that they're not as juvenile as we perceive them to be. Their EQ is just as high as their IQ. They understand what the pillars that make up a healthy relationship are. You heard it from them. It was a great episode. I'm Dineo Ranaga. This is Breaking the Silence. Tune in next time. <laughs>